Welcome to this episode of The Heart of the Matter. On today's episode, we'll be talking to Gwenga and Umilola Oshikoya about the book, The Richer Woman, which Umilola has just written. As you know, Omilola is a co-producer with me on The Heart of the Matter. She delves into many personal details in her life in order to be able to help those who have been through experiences similar to what she's gone through. So stay tuned as we bring you today's episode of The Heart of the Matter. These things sometimes are psychological. I think the financial cost as one of the many things was enormous. It was a God experience. I just wanted to find God. Simply feeling like you're inspired. I mean, is it always I so? Tell us about the solution. As one of with 18 to 35 years of age, out of work. Hey, I don't have the skill for this particular problem to solve this particular problem. None of us talked about the bread seller. Welcome back to the heart of the matter, where today we have turned the tables. And the, a presenter, one of my co-presenters on the heart of the matter, is being interviewed. Um, I'm talking about Mr. Gwenga and Mrs. Omilola Oshikoya. Um, now, Omilola has written a beautiful book. We're going to be talking about this book on the heart of the matter today. Welcome, Omi. Welcome, Gwenga. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank the you. richer woman, what, what inspired you to write this book? Um, God, definitely. <laughs> if it was left to me, I'd probably write a book on do it and create on finance. But um, um, actually, you know, I had actually finished writing the book before I even got the name, The Richer Woman. And it's just a story about my life experiences from childhood. Um, to be a young lady and then in marriage as well. And so um, God began to show me the kind... So I had um, preconceived um, notions of what a woman should look like or what a woman is supposed to be, you know, but God began to teach me over the years of the woman that he wants all women to be, which is the rich now, woman. Now, you've talked... You've said that this is a story about your life. Yes. Um, from, from a child to a married woman. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I've read a lot of it. It's very personal. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Benga, how did you handle a lot of the personal stuff that um, is now available to all the public? Yeah. Um, for me, um, handling it wasn't so difficult because, to be honest, I think God was preparing me for this book. Um, I met my wife, you know, obviously. I, you know, my cousin's wedding. And um, I'd never, I knew at the time that, you know, I wanted to get married. I'd been praying to, f um, to God to find a wife. And I met her. And, you know, going forward and coming to the point of this book, um, there was a day I was outside washing my car and I was thinking to myself, you know, where is God taking us and why, you know, this book? Why so personal? You know, why marriage? And I now realize that, you know, God is intentional. You know, from the beginning, he's done so many things. And we need to align ourselves with him. I now realize that God it really and truly is indeed intentional. That the message in this book, our marriage, the experience we've had, you know, we need to let people know that God is always willing and ready to redeem people from whatever difficulties they go through. Now, you talked a little about the, the, the title of the book. We have Rich, Richer, Richest. <laughs> um, why the richer woman? Okay. So um, because of some of the experiences I, I went through as a child, I grew up um, wanting to be rich. I wanted to be a rich woman. You know, and for me, being a rich woman was a successful woman in my career. And that's because I came from a very wealthy home, but... At some point, we went through financial challenges, and I never wanted to experience those challenges. So I focused on, you know, richness, wealth, you know, in terms of money, success. And a lot of young women, unfortunately, in this generation are focused on that as well. That's, I mean, look at social media. That's the message that is being preached. And some of it is because some of our mothers were not allowed to you know, work, they were not allowed to express. Some of our mothers may have felt that, you know, they, um, they couldn't live the life they wanted to live because they were constrained. And so they've, they've, 
you know, brought us up to be strong women that want to be career driven and successful. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is when career and success becomes at the forefront of your, your, your life and then every other thing suffers. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I worked in a, I wanted to be an investment banker, I got my dream job, I was making a lot of money, but my marriage was suffering. Um, being, uh, you know, uh, I was also not able to be there for my children as well, you know. And then I got to the point where, you know, God began to speak to me about purpose and I began to want more. I wasn't fulfilled anymore. All the money wasn't making sense. Our marriage was going through really tough time. I mean, we, if not for the grace of God, we probably would not be together. And then God began, so through that process, God began to show me of who he, who he has called us to be as women, that yes, you can be successful in your career, you know, but you know, you don't neglect that, you know, you are all, you also have a purpose in your, you know, as a wife and also as a mother to the children he has given you. And true, so you don't have true success if your children are not successful. You know, a lot of people would have all this money and end up going from one rehab center to the other you know, trying to sort out their children because they've missed out the, you know, the important parts of raising those children. And so God began to show me who he created, you know, women to be and who he wants the woman to be and that once you're in purpose, he would give you wealth. He will give you, so I say, the ritual woman, a woman's guide to true wealth. He will give you true wealth. So in all areas of your life, you'll be truly, you'll be wealthy. And that, that's, that's um, the ritual woman, really. Okay, so, so it's, it's just like the scripture that says, lay not up uh, on earth treasures tre tre for yourself, but lay them in heaven. Yeah. So what you're saying in essence is wealth is not just about money or material things. Yeah. There, there, there are many other things that make up wealth. So the richer woman yeah. is the woman that has the other things, not just the money. Not just money, money. exactly. Okay. So I talk about money in the book because obviously <laughs> I, I, I'm known for personal finance. But money is, money is just one aspect of wealth. And unfortunately, we've made money this God and we're serving mammon and we've forgotten the other areas. But, you know, even in the Bible, if you look at it, money, God blessed his children with money, but oftentimes money was the last. So he blessed them with other things and their money, you know, mm -hmm. comes forth. And even the Bible says, uh, but remember the Lord, for it is he that gives the power to get wealth. Mm -hmm. So if you go to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. The same way, once you have God, he will give you all things. Sometimes you won't even need cash, and, but you have influence. Influence is wealth, you know. I mean, there's certain times I don't buy clothes anymore. I don't have to. People actually, the, my last events. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> my last event, people were sending me um, messages like four different brands. What, what are you wearing? Would like to give you what to wear, you know. Mm. And so imagine... If, so, I mean, how do you that quantify... That happens to celebrities, so now you're a celebrity. <laughs> but, you know, so I oh, wanted God. to be rich. And maybe if I had all the money I want, I may not have even been able to buy some of the things I have now, you know. But I've just seen it. I've seen a different aspect to what true wealth is. Now, we're going to drill down into this book because you talk about how your childhood or the earlier years affected your adult life. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think it's very important that parents understand that what they, the way they raise their children is going to have a really lasting effect. So we're going to go on a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be back with Omilola and Benga Oshikoya talking about the ritual. So stay tuned to The House of Matter. Welcome back to the Heart of the Matter where we're talking to the Oshikoyas. One of the things that stands out in this book is your transparency. You've told your story like it is so that people who are going through anything like what you went through know that somebody's been through it before and gotten out of it so I can get out of it as well. I'm very particular about children, how we raise our children, because what the way we raise our children is going to have a tremendous impact on the kind of life they will live in the future. Now, now you've talked a bit about your childhood. You, you said just now that you came from a relatively wealthy family. 
but times came when things were not so easy and your, your parents had to move out of the house they were living in, move into a smaller house, and then after that move into, you know, so you had to be found out to live with some relative and so on and so forth. And uh, you talked about abuse. Okay. What can parents do to prevent children, their children, from going through similar circumstances? Because we know it will affect them. Okay, what, what can parents do? Um, in terms of abuse, it's so rampant. So I was sexually abused by a house help. Um, thankfully, it wasn't rape or anything, or he didn't, you know, it wasn't, it was just, um, and not to be too graphic, but it was just... Um, touch. Yeah, touch, you know. And funny enough, I didn't even know I was abused until when I was about 12, I was watching the Oprah Winfrey show, and then she was talking about abuse, and I was like, oh, wow, that actually happened to me. And then, thankfully, because he, the house up had been with us for over five years, and he left. And by God incident, he came back to work with us again just around the same time when I realized I had been abused. I guess that was his karma. You know, one day I just spoke to my parents and they gave him the beating of his life and locked him up. But, you know, I think it's so rampant. I mean, the, the amount of people that have reached out to me on abuse, it is too rampant. We cannot take it for granted. And it's not just house helps. I've heard of situations where uncles, relatives. I've heard of situations where female house helps molest female, or, or I heard of a situation where the, a guy, his, his father's bodyguard, raped him and his brother, and today they're gay. You know, it's, it's so rampant. Schools, I've heard of teachers, you know. So we have to educate our children. We must talk to them about it from a very, very young age. You know, so, so for me, for instance, I didn't even know I was abused, so I couldn't even say anything because I didn't know any, you know, I didn't know what had actually happened until I watched it. You know, so for me now, what I do with my girls is I'm constantly having that conversation with them. Nobody should touch you over here. No one's allowed to touch you. No one should, I mean, it got to one point where my daughter was like, Mommy, a teacher touched my hand. And I was like, okay, not that kind of, you know. <laughs> you know, I hope I wasn't being paranoid. But we must have these conversations with these children. You know, I, I heard of a song, a, a nursery rhyme type mm -hmm. of thing that, that parents can teach their children. That mm -hmm. This is my nose, it's a public part. Anybody can touch yeah, it, yeah. this is my ear. But when it comes to their private parts, they're told to shout, they're told to, to report it to okay. somebody. Because yeah. abusers will often threaten the children that if you, if you tell anybody your daddy will die or your mommy will yes. die, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what concerns me is that an abused child will obviously send off some signals. If the parents are not around all the time, if the parents are not watching, if they're not attentive, they will miss those signs. Mm -hmm. okay. so now, I don't know if what my own signs were, because like I said, I didn't even know I was... You didn't abused. know you were being abused. But my mom was, was a stay-home stay home mom, mom, so she was always around, but I guess... Mm -hmm. Also, the, they were going through, my parents were going through their own ch marriage challenges that every couple goes through, you know. So it was not, but I, I will say also that do not have male staff if you have female children. Um, so what I do is we don't have any male staff. I mean, we have, my husband's washerman, the washman has been with us for over 17 years. Um, even before I got married to him, he doesn't enter the house. So he drops the clothes at the door. When I have drivers, I don't let them enter the house. And I tell my children, you're not supposed to. You can greet when you see or in the car, but do not relate on any. So it's important, do, I say, as much as possible, don't have cooks, male cooks. Have female cooks if you must, you know, or, you know, ensure that maybe, I don't know, just don't have male staff when you have girls. But for boys now as well, you, when you're hearing situations of boys, you know, being molested and raped. I guess with parents, you just have to keep talking to them keep talking to them and asking them every day. Once, you know, pay attention. So once you feel like your child is maybe a bit withdrawn, you know, something is going mm -hmm. on, you know, give them a diary. Oftentimes, I, I, my daughter has a diary and she doesn't know sometimes, I'll just go and I'll read it because they tend to pour out into their diary, not thinking that mommy or daddy will read it. But you, then you can also tell if something has happened. Now, Bega, did you have similar experiences yourself as a child? 
what are the experiences you had that informed who you are today? I think as a child, obviously, see, that's why God is intentional. We're all different. Um, my experiences as a child was very different. There's a part in the book she wrote about, you know, she didn't know how to spend time with herself, you know, how to love herself. So for me, I think, you know, as a child, I went to boarding school, you know, from a young age, so I knew how to take care of myself. You know, while, whilst I was abroad, you know, I could go to pizza or at Burger King, cinema by myself, and I'll be actually a lot happier than going with friends. So I think, which is why, you know, earlier I said, I now know the essence of this book and the essence of our marriage. I'm here to support her, she's my wife. I'm here to back her, you know, with what she has to do. You know, we have children, obviously, um, any parent will worry about their child. But at the same time, prayer is key. You know, I remember my parents, especially my father, used to pray a lot at night when we're asleep, you know, because that's, you can't be everywhere with them. But obviously, you know, no matter how much you love someone, you need to spend time. And she always tells us, particularly with our daughters, that you know, I need to spend time with these girls because they look up to you as a man, as a father. And you know, we're not all perfect, you know, men. We're trying to run around, make money, you know, might not have time for our kids. But generally, um, I think looking at everything, looking at my life, looking at her life, it's a blessing. And God, you know, works in mysterious ways. Yes. So, I'm, I'm, I don't want us to look at the past. I want us to look forward so we can speak more truths. But the past often advi advises the yes. future. And, and um, we're going to talk about affirmation because that was an important part of your need. Okay, so we're going to take a break, viewers. We'll be back in a moment talking to Benga and Umilala Oshikoya about the richer woman. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Heart of Matter, where we're talking to the Oshikoyas. Um, before I, we talk about affirmation, because that's a really important top, topic to talk about. Um, for you, Benga, yes. the book has not been out for, for more than a month so far, yeah. but already it's making waves. Yeah. Um, maybe, hopefully, Omidala would become a bestseller. Okay? Good, really. Now, if that happens, it's going to bring some changes. She's going to be busy. She's going to be in demand. She's, you know, how are you going to be able to handle that? Um, for me, I think it's already done. Because I remember when she started writing a book, and you know, she was a bit apprehensive about the contents, about you know, letting herself go. And it occurred to me that, particularly after the prophecy she had at Google, when, you know, when people get to read the book, um, there are things God wants to do, and if we're not careful, and if we call ourselves Christians and we're not open, we need to be, um, to be open and allow things to happen naturally. For instance, take the story of Noah, or um, who is it? Uh, the guy in the belly of the fish. Jonah. 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 Now, when God seeks you, and finds you and calls you to do something, he will hold you accountable, and he will try and try. And I thought to myself, I can't be an obstacle in this book. I need to allow her to do it. I need to let this message come out. And I thought to myself, there will come a day, and God will ask, you know, why didn't you allow her, or why didn't she write this book? And she'd probably say, because of me. You know, for instance, Adam and Eve scenario. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, you know, I'm not phased by what people will say or what people will think. Because at the end of the day, the book is not for everybody. But I hope it's for most people. And, you know, marriage is key to God. And if our marriage, the experiences we've had and the truth we're saying in the book can help other people to the glory of God, I'm all for it. Good. Um, you, you know... Let's talk about affirmation. 
we, if we are children of God, we have God's aff affirmation. But a young girl needs her father's affirmation. A young girl who has her father's affirmation will say to the young men that come, my father loves me. My father says I'm pretty, I'm this, I'm that. So I don't care what you say. But a young girl who hasn't had her father's affirmation will, 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 will follow the first guy that says, oh, you look so good. Okay. Now, Omilola, affirmation was one of the things that you were looking for because, and I know that you love your father and your father loves you so much, but you didn't get the affirmation. So that says that there are lots of fathers who are there at home, they love their children, but they're not showing it. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, so how can we raise children, mm -hmm. especially daughters, who will not look for affirmation because they're not, they didn't get it at home? Okay, so I, like I say to my husband all the time, we have two girls, and I say to him, embrace them. Tell them they, they look beautiful. I, I thought I was ugly at one point in my life, and that's because obviously my mom is light-skinned, my brothers are light-skinned, you know, and... So, so light-skinned is beautiful? No, but I just thought... So pe my mom is extremely... She's stunning. You know, my, my brothers are very good-looking. So I always just used to feel that... I always felt left out. I always just felt like I wanted to be... I wanted to be pretty. And then I would go to my mom's family's house and everybody's light-skinned. They're like, ah, you look like your daddy. But she do -do. You know, those kind of things. But... It, There's doo doo yummy. And then, unfortunately, even the dolls. So even the They're dolls we skin. have. So even my daughters now have asked me, "But mommy, Cinderella is beautiful and she's really, you know." Mm -hmm. When I have to, then okay, then you know, I have to. I had to buy black dolls. So even yeah. So with a so I didn't think I was beautiful, and maybe my parents probably never even thought that I would. I know what. They knew I was beautiful, but they probably never even thought they needed to, to say it. Mm -hmm. And I probably wouldn't, even for the revelation of Christ, I probably wouldn't even have said it to my daughters. You know, so I always tell my husband, let's, you know, tell them. And it's okay if I say I love you, but let them hear from you. So I remember the first time a man said to me, I love you. He was like my savior, my knight in shiny armor, because I had never... I don't think I had really heard someone say, I love you. I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel worthy. You know, obviously I was abused as well. So that plays on you. I felt unworthy, you know. And so for a man to say it, I thought, wow, you know. And so even when the relationship was unhealthy, I thought I couldn't do better. You know, that was the love that I knew and I wanted. So my, now I tell my husband all the time, you know, tell the girls that you love them. Recently, my daughter, my younger daughter, and I had to go away to to London, and he was left with my younger daughter, um, the oldest daughter, and I was happy because I felt like it was an opportunity Bonds for them time. to bond. So take your daughters on dates, take them separately sometimes, so there's no sibling rivalry. Take one on a date, hang out, you know, let them know. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you look so nice today. I love the dress you're wearing. You know, oh, those shoes. Why when did you do your hair? You know, those are the things. And then, so when a guy comes, and, they, and so when the guy says, oh, I love you. You've heard it from the they, Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Well, prove it. You know, if you say, you know, how can you just say you love me? You just met me. But for someone that is needing that, it needs to hear. They're like, thank you. And then they give in. So that's why you find that you, girls are not promiscuous because they want to be promiscuous or because they want to be loose. They're just looking for that affirmation. Then I talk about um, the analogy of the olive tree and who, how the olive tree is a generational tree, you know, and thinks of, so when the Bible says your children will be like olive trees around about your table, God knows what he's talking about and how that analogy um, helps with parenting. And so you're not really successful if your children are not successful. If you don't, so you hear of parents, you know, um, their children are just, they have all this money, but their children are being brought up by house helps, no, you know, and the children don't amount to anything. But, you know, we are meant to do that. Then I, then I go on to, because I'm a life coach as well, so God began to tell me about all the different aspects of life. So, yes, spirituality is key. Health, you know, friendships, relationships, the relationships you have can make or mar your destiny. You know, um, time management. You know, God began to teach me the different components that would make you the richer woman. So that's all I talk about in part two. Part two is, is it's, I mean, it's, even for me, I know it wasn't me that wrote that book. It, it, it's, it's not 
a textbook, part two. No, no, no. But it's easy to read. It's easy now, to read. Now, you've launched in London. Yes. You've launched in Lagos. Yes. You're launching in Abuja. Yeah. Um, and how do people get hold of The Richer Woman? Okay, so where we will be on Amazon. I mean, by the time you're probably watching this, we'll be on Amazon, print copies. Um, in, if you're in Lagos, there's Latana Books. Um, you can also go to Na La Nakino's in Ikoyi. We're also looking at different outlets on the mainland. Nationwide, currently, you can order if you go on my website, www.umilola.com forward slash order. However, we're going to be on, we're already um, working with Jumia, and Jumia will do nationwide. But worldwide, it will be Amazon, will be on Kindle as well. We're just taking it um, in little phases. But, I mean, we've got people asking from Canada, Australia, from all over the world. But, you know, it's going to be available, available. worldwide. Yeah. And it's going to be a bestseller. Amen. Okay. I've read this book, well, most of it. And I think that it's not just a read for women. I think you men also ought to read it because you need to know what's going on in, in the women's lives. Um, so get a copy of this book, The Richer Woman by Omi Lola Oshikoya. It's been a great pleasure to have had Omi and Benga on the heart of the matter. And the next time you'll be sitting in this chair <laughs> yeah. and not in that chair. It's been a great pleasure to have you. Thank and you, um, it's been a great pleasure for us to bring you this program um, we're really delighted that this book has come out, and uh, we're looking forward to you getting your copy and reading it. We'll be back again next week with another episode of The Heart of Matter. Until then, stay blessed. Mm -hmm.